Welcome to Smacky's Garage, where today we're going to be drilling holes in our carburetor. So I've had this carburetor on the car for the past, since I've got the car on the road, past few years. What I'm noticing now is it's not as adjustable as I want it to be. What I'm running into is since I'm running such a large cam on the car that it's not making a lot of vacuum. And that's meaning that in order to get it to idle correctly, I have to open up further and further the throttle blades, which in turn is opening up the transfer slots, which is making the main jets start to be used during the idle circuit. So previously I drilled holes in the primary up here to uh, allow more air through and so I can have the transfer slots set correctly. Now I need to look at the secondary side and do the same thing. Because what I've noticed is now that the primary side is set to get it to idle correctly, I adjust the secondary uh, screw back here open up the secondaries slightly, but now the transfer slot there is incorrect. So I'm trying to get them both set correctly so it'll stop backfiring through the carbon and it runs right. So today we're gonna drill some holes in the throttle body plates. First, let's go ahead and drain all the gas. Then we'll end up flipping the carburetor over to revealing the screws on the bottom side. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what we're seeing here. You can see while these are set up correctly, the secondaries actually has a gap and you can see through to the other side. So the secondaries are open too much. And what that's causing is essentially a stumble. There you go, you can see the light coming through. So the secondaries are open and it's making it harder and harder to get a correct, get the car to run correctly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna turn the screw back so that these are more closed to where they should be. And then we're gonna take this bottom plate off and then we're gonna drill a hole in the throttle plates. So you can see on the primary plates, I already drilled holes here and here. I need to do the same on this side, but they need to be on the side of the idle jet. So here and here. So let's go ahead and let me reset this and then we'll take it apart to start drilling. Now there are six screws on the bottom that need to come out. They're all Phillips head and they're really easy to get out. You don't really need to take off the fuel bowls on either side, but by having the accelerator pumps out of the way, it does make things a little bit easier when you're doing this. Now with all the screws off, I should just be able to pop this off and it'll come off nice and easy. There's a gasket in between the throttle plate and the body itself. Now I'm gonna start with a small drill and I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna start on one side and then I'll move to the other side. Now I'm moving to the drill size that I wanna end with. Cleaning this is incredibly important because you want to make sure you don't get any shavings in the intake manifold after. If you've never done this, you take a larger drill bit, go to the other side and chamfer the hole. That gets all the burrs off of it for you. So you'll notice when looking at it, the transfer slots look like they're a square. This is how I typically set them up for the carburetor. Holly has a specification of the amount that could show that you could check with a, a feeler gauge, but I'm just setting it up, setting both sides up so that it's a square. Now you can see now we have a hole in each one of the throttle blade plates. This will help me get some more air past it so I can idle and keep the, the throttle uh, plates closed rather than having them open a little bit and exposing the transfer slot. So making the, which will make the car run rough. When you're doing this, you always want to start with a smaller size and work your way up. You don't want to go too large because if you go too large, then what's going to happen is you could have the potential we're going to be idling too high. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this back together and we'll get it back in the car. But I'm going to clean it out with carburetor cleaner, make sure everything looks good, make sure there's nothing left before we pull it back together.
Well, that's it. The car's running much better. As you can tell, the exhaust is a lot cleaner. It doesn't sound like it's raspy, like it's getting too much fuel at idle. Air to fuel gauge looks good. Thanks for tuning in this week on Smacky's Garage. I'm going to go for a drive. I'll see you next week.